So welcome to our online visual hosted by CR Solidarity in New York City. Usually we do a visual every Friday night in Union Square, but due to the pandemic, we haven't been able to meet safely. So we're happy now to be hosting an online visual that's accessible to a global audience. Thank you so much for being here. This online visual is being recorded and will be broadcast on Facebook and YouTube. Please note that this visual will last approximately 15 minutes. Syria Solidarity in New York City stands in solidarity with Syrian civilians and Ukrainian civilians under siege. Both Syrians and Ukrainians demand Putin be held accountable for crimes against humanity, and we stand with them in this demand. For our opening video, this month will be dedicated to the memory of the Gota massacre, chemical massacre, on 21st of August 2013. This first video is from uh, a very early peaceful protest in Duma, which is in Gota, and it's in Gota city. are not heard. Their funerals are not seen. A revolution is underway to end one of the world's longest running dictatorships, but we don't know the facts because the government of Syria keeps reporters away from its brutal crackdown. Tonight, we have a rare look inside. Since spring, thousands of Syrians have been demanding the end of the 40-year dictatorship of the Assad family. The UN estimates that since the uprising began, Syrian forces have killed 4,000 civilians. And just today, the opposition claimed 60 deaths in the city of Homs. Tonight, CBS News correspondent Clarissa Ward, who traveled through Syria without government supervision, shows us what President Bashar al-Assad doesn't want the world to see. <laughs> Months, this is what we've seen of the revolution in Syria. Cell phone video of demonstrations met with bullets from security forces. To meet the people holding those cell phones, we entered the country as tourists, carrying only a small camera. Razan Zaytouni is an opposition activist who insists on using her real name. The regime already knows who she is. She is in hiding to avoid arrest. Are you scared? Who is not? But we have to continue. We decided to start our revolution. This is what we have been dreaming of long time ago. She took us to the Damascus suburb of Duma, to the funeral of a 16-year-old boy these people say was shot by security forces at a protest the day before. <laughs> Men and women poured in by the hundreds, their grief tinged with defiance. This is real Syria, okay? If you come, you will see real bodies. They are not stones. They are not toys. They are real bodies. They want international military support. And they say they will not give up their protest until President Assad's regime falls. A military helicopter circled overhead, but the chanting only grew stronger. We are peaceful and they are shooting us, they shouted. We want freedom. There's a special graveyard for protesters who have been gunned down in Duma. Here they're called Shaheed or martyrs. There are 60 graves. Matt just handed me this photograph of a family member of his who was killed. He was only 13 years old. The UN estimated in early November that at least 4,000 people have been killed. Activists tell us the number is much higher. But the violence has only fueled the protests, which are creeping closer to the heart of the capital. Just outside of Damascus and suburbs like the demanding These protesters have rarely seen reporters from outside the country. They handed us notes. We don't shed tears for the martyrs, we shed tears for the cowards, one read. Later on, Razan introduced us to people who have paid a high price for demonstrating against the Assad regime. This 20-year-old was shot three times at this protest in July, captured on a cell phone. Five months later, he is bedridden, but he says the minute he can walk, he will be back on the streets, marching for freedom. 
His other shaitan says the regime is the devil. Certainly it's a regime that shows no signs of lifting its crackdown on the opposition. What's your message to uh, President Assad? Leave. Leave now because you know that you will leave at the end, but with more victims and with more suffering of, of the people. So just leave and leave us to start our new future, our new country. You, you got enough of our blood. Clarissa Ward joins us tonight. Clarissa, what do these people want from the Assad government? Well, I think in the short term, clearly, they want for Assad's regime to be overthrown. But more broadly speaking, this is really a battle for freedom. And I spoke to one young man and he said something that really stuck with me. He said, you know, the main purpose of this, all we really want is to be able to speak our minds without being afraid. You were traveling alone, linking up with the opposition. Tell me a little bit about what that was like. It's incredibly challenging because all of the opposition activists who I was with are wanted by Assad's forces. And what you don't necessarily see in that report are that just outside the, the capital, there are checkpoints every other block. And if these activists get stopped at one of those checkpoints, it means certain arrest. Clarissa Ward, thank you very much. The Obama administration has So we were showing this only to, to show that um, the people who were gassed are actually like, as you can see, they are just peaceful protesters and they're not terrorists, as the regime was saying. Okay. Now we will do a five minutes of silent visual with everyone holding their signs.
kasih itu buat gua mati. Okay, thank you. So for our next part, uh, we will continue to show another piece of Omar, Omar Shuri's speech in the Security Council with a message to the Arab governments that want to normalize relations with Assad. You're a member of this council. Welcome the Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad into their home, the United Arab Emirates. Don't you have any respect for the people who've been suffering for years, for everyone who died and the torture in Syria, for every mother who lost her kid? Don't you have any respect for those people? Normalizing Assad is a crime. Tourists and travelers from around the world must know of your support to the killing of children and women in Syria. We will make sure, I will make sure, we'll find out and understand how completely the void of morals the leadership of Emirates is. And the people know, behind Burj Khalifa, it won't be as tall, it won't be as big as your shame. Shame on you, shame on you. Hmm. We can now take a screenshot with everyone holding their signs. One second. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for everyone for being here. Please share the link privately with your friends. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. Um, we're really happy to hold a space like this on a weekly basis. Have a good night.